All right, guys. All right. We're getting ready to get this morning morning started here. Well, welcome each and every one of you to the Monday morning tax talk, guys. If you come aboard, guys, just hit a little join. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, Mr. Knox? How y'all doing? Y'all about to grab a pen and paper. Grab a pen and paper, guys. We're going to do Monday morning tax talk right now. How to beat every audit is what we're going to be going over today. All right. Um, so when we start off, guys, by um, um, thanking every one of you that are veterans. Thank you for your service that you... Um, gave to this country uh, um, we also guys want you to go out and get your free meals and that's out there as well go ahead and get those free meals guys but we're getting ready to uh, um, have a great call here on how to beat every audit so you might want to share this one all right you might want to actually share this one out guys get individuals on we, we allow a couple of um seconds here a little bit less than a minute because i'm going to Get you on the call. I'm gonna get you off of the call and stuff. Thank you for joining. Mr. Strolls here. Welcome, sir. Welcome, 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 Debbie. Pastor Knotts. Awesome meeting. Awesome meeting. Guys, y'all better watch out for actually Pastor Knotts. Anytime y'all um friend friend him up and <laughs> make sure y'all friend him up because whenever he does another um uh, um Water Walkers conference, you want to be in the place in Greensboro wherever he's going to do it. I know he's going to Baltimore also as well. So. Make sure you get that information with him. All right, Paige, uh, welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Share it up. We're going to wait a couple more minutes. We're going to go ahead and get started, guys, with our talk of today, how to beat every audit. I'm excited about um, this one, guys, okay? I'm excited about this one here to make sure, guys, that you're beating that game, okay, that you're beating that game there. So appreciate the shares. Appreciate the likes. Um, and things of that nature. Welcome, Stephen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We, okay, we got about less than 30 seconds before we go ahead and, and get started this morning. Less than 30 seconds. We're going to go ahead and get started. Talisa, Ms. Robinson, welcome, welcome. Hey, my fellow EA, what's going on? Shonda, it's awesome, guys. Make sure y'all actually look her up also as well and stuff and get her a book. You're going to need, um, need that information also as well. All right. Welcome, guys. About 20 more seconds. Driving and listening. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, keep your eyes on the road, baby girl. Keep your eyes on the road. All right, guys. Guys, we're going to be going on how to beat every audit. Got about less than 20 seconds to go before we go ahead and get started. All right. Get that pen, get the paper together. Self, if you're driving, go ahead and grab that pen, grab the paper, guys, as um, we kind of go over here. I wanted to prepare you guys. 10 seconds to go. You're going to go ahead and actually get rolling, rolling, rolling. Share it out if you can. Share, 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 share. Like, 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 like. All of those big things right there. But this information has to go out, guys. Let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling, guys. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, guys. Uh, welcome each and every one of you guys to Monday Morning Tax Talk with your favorite EA, T. Hawk, your favorite EA, guys. Thank you for actually coming out as we um, specialize in saving you money on your taxes and being compliant. Those are things that we want to make sure that you're doing. We want you to save money on your taxes, but we also want you to be compliant. This morning, we are talking about how to beat every audit. Now, I want you to notice that I didn't say how not to get audited. I didn't say how not to get audited. Why? Because there's no way that we can guarantee somebody's not going to get audited. Okay, because there's different uh, reasons why individuals get audits, and then just by the computer, you may just have that lucky draw. Okay, that lucky draw that you are audited one year or two. Okay, you know it may be because um, honestly, sometimes maybe because a, a tax professional may be getting audited because they have did certain things on people's tax returns, and the IRS basically looked at one of those and they say, hey, you know what? Let's look at some of these other Schedule Cs that individuals are you know, that this individual um, prepared, and then they might audit everybody. Okay, so so sometimes, guys, you basically cannot control. Okay, if you get audited or not. However, what you can control is how you need to beat every audit. See, it's okay to get audited as long as you're prepared and long as you are ready for it. We always have to say that the first thing that we want you to do is do your tax reform, your tax return like you are getting audited. Go ahead and do that tax return just in case you are getting audited already. Do it just like that so you have those things. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. I'm going to call this thing, guys, uh, um, um, triple D. Go ahead and put that down, triple D. Okay, easy way for you to remember this is triple 
D. Here's the best ways, guys, to beat every audit. If you prepare like this, doesn't matter if the IRS, um, I'm sending you a letter, Don't. doesn't matter if they, they, they come to your door, doesn't matter if anything like that, you will be ready to basically beat every audit in your business, okay? The first thing in triple D, guys, first D, guys, is document. Document, put that down. Document, document, document. Documentation, guys, is going to be key. And the reason that we say it's document, number one, that's the one reason that you are able to take some of the expenses that you are able to take anyway, okay? That's one reason that you're able to do that because one of the, the things that, that the Eternal Revenue Service basically say is, they basically say they must have the intent to generate a profit, actually participate, and records. A part of documentation is your records. See, you can have the expenses, but you have to basically be able to document the expense that you are taking, that you're putting on that Schedule C form, okay? If you're using Schedule C, okay? Form, well, but that's your expenses. You got to be able to actually document those things. If you're driving a certain amount of miles and you're putting a certain amount of miles on this thing, guys, the IRS is not stupid. Y'all stop thinking that the IRS is dumb, the stupid, you're the only one that hadn't did this before. No, they understand if you're putting certain miles, is Nine times out of 10, most of the times, individuals are not documenting their miles. They're not documenting miles everywhere you're going. But, but if you're saying, oh, I'm doing X amount of um, miles a year, and this is the one I can't actually stand, is, you know, how many miles you actually did? All the same as last year. Really? You start putting the same miles this year and the same miles as last year. Really, you drove the exact same miles that you did the previous year that you're doing now? Really? They want to see the documentation. Just document it then. If you're saying you did those miles, you're going to document. You have to put those things down. You have to let them know, you know your purpose of your trip. What was your purpose of your trip? Okay. When you let them know the purpose of your trip, okay, that's the purpose of it. But where did you exactly go? What did you exactly do on that trip? How many miles from where you are to there? It, was it personal? Was it business? Is it a legitimate business write-off? If you're not putting those things out, you know, no, you don't have to have an app to do it. No. Before apps, what do you use? You use a dog on Excel spreadsheet to document your miles. Okay? That's what you actually did. But now it's easier with an with a, a, a app, but sometimes it's too easy with an app. What do you mean, Terrence, by too easy with the app? Because it's too easy for an app. Because this is why I, I tell you, if you have an app, and I love apps, okay? But if you have an app that when you get into your car, it automatically starts to track, it automatically starts to actually come back. It's good if you're diligent enough to go ahead and you know so swipe to the left, swipe to the right, or whatever you design, if it's personal or it's business, that's great. But sometimes some of the apps that you need to actually be using are the ones that make you to say, I'm starting business now. Why? To make sure that it's your purpose is business. It draws your mind, I'm doing business right now, and then you actually hit it, okay? Just because it actually tracks. But we need to make sure that we start tracking our miles. The reason I'm using miles, because that's one of the big ones that the Return on Revenue Service is going to look at. They understand what's going on, you know, and then ask you, well, hey, what's your percentage that you do business, that you do personal? And then you say, I do, oh, every time I drive, there's always business, but you only got one car. You got one car and you say everywhere you go is business? Really? <laughs> okay, <laughs> really? Come on. They're not dumb. Yes, you can write off a lot of things. Yes, you, you, your miles is a huge expense that you can't take advantage of. But guys, don't be dumb, okay? And let's document everything. You're eating out, okay? Every time you eat out, is every time you eat out business over some of the personal. You're eating out alone sometimes and stuff and, and, and stuff and you're in the same place. You go from your office two or three miles down the street and stuff and you, you're you eating at the Panera and stuff like that or wherever it is. You're not doing business. You're not talking. You're going through the drive through a Panera. But you're writing it off. What business did you do? Guys, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. See, those are little things that when I was getting, guess what? When they start seeing things like that, what can they do? They can take away all of the miles. They can take away all of it and say, Psh, I'm not giving it to you because you just proved to them that what's your character? My character is I'm just going to put things down and try to get over. No, we're going to start documenting everything, guys. OK, start document, document. document. So it's OK if they say, hey, I see that you have 
this amount of, of, of dollars in advertising? You want to say, yes, I do. And then you want to basically pull it out, whether it's your spreadsheet or your app. They got your receipts there. Sometimes the advertisers may give you the email receipts. I love email receipts to come in here. I like to scan it, having the pictures. Why? So, so it looks nice and clear. But you want to be able to show them, yes, look, here it is. It's $2,116.41. And then your receipts match the same thing. That's when you're talking about documenting. You have everything per line that's there for them. Document, the, it's, it's not just easy guys saying that, hey, I got one account, I got one bank account and stuff, and I use this bank account for business, which you should, okay, which you should. But when I was look at the swipes, it's Walmart, okay, it's Walmart. Great, it's good that it's Walmart. And then you say that it's supplies, and there's a lot of money on supplies, and they say, oh, okay, you know, can you document that? Well, you give them the bank a statement again and say, I, I just documented. No, you didn't. Because what else can you get at Walmart? You can get your groceries at Walmart. You can get your food. That's personal. That's not business. Ain't got nothing to do with it. You better have that itemized receipt there to let them know. See, certain places you need that receipt. There's some things online with your websites, you got, you know, Google, thing. you may be able to get away with a little stuff like that. But as far as things with receipts, no, you can't. Start being, the, I don't care how you do your record keeping system. I just want to make sure that your record keeping system matches what you put on your tax return. Okay. So if you have an app and you're good with the app as far as doing great, a lot of people ask me, Terrence, which is the best app that you can use? What's the best app? The best app in the system that you can use is the one that you do use. That's the best one. The one you do use. I don't care if it's a shoebox or folding system, whatever accounting system you have, but those receipts goes in the, the shoeboxes. They got, I got all supplies in this box. <laughs> okay. I got all meals in this box. I got all utilities in this box. Whatever it is, all you want is that folder, that box, that app, or whatever to add up to what's on the tax return. Don't put stuff on the tax return and then try to match it with receipts. Get your receipts and put that on the tax return, okay? That's documentation. That's documentation, guys, okay? So then you don't have to worry about an audit. You can beat every last one of them. It doesn't matter how many expenses. I have an extra one, a, a client that did it excellent. You know, he's a travel musician. He sings, okay? You know, some people are evangelists, okay? He's an evangelist because he's a gospel singer, but he travels and sings all of the time, everywhere. He's gotten audited twice. Why? Because you look at the money actually that he actually makes, not but so much, okay? It's good, but not but so much. But he's having all of these miles that he travels because he doesn't like to fly. So he's traveling and driving all across the country and staying in hotels and stuff. I'm talking over 50,000 miles a year. Yes, okay? Over 50,000 miles a year. Of course he got audited, right? Well, we got audited. It's like, come on, IRS, no problem. Come on, audit me. We got audited. He had everything there, line by line, every trip, every hotel stay that match up with the trips and the mileage from Google. Because, guys, you can get the exact miles these days. You know, it's not, you know, I think I do, it's about 100 miles. No, you can Google that and look that up. Okay, you can look that up. Make sure that it matches. But he did that, and he used to say he won both for the audits, hands down. Won them, hands down, because of documentation. That's the first D. Terrence, what in the world is the second D? Let's go to the second D of our triple Ds, guys, on how to unbeat every audit. Second D, guys, detail. Detail, okay? You want to be detail on your Schedule C. You want to have detail records, okay? Why do I say detail records? Sometimes when, the, when we actually do that tax returns and we don't know what category to put certain items in. And then we try to bunch everything into the same category. And then the ones we don't know what category is, we pull into miscellaneous. What does that tell an internal revenue service if they're looking at, at your tax return? You have a lot of things just on, on, on um, miscellaneous. You know, you got $5,000 on miscellaneous and then you, the, the other you know, total is only $2,000. You got more miscellaneous than any other item there. That's not telling the internal revenue service is. Nothing. And then when they say, well, what in the world is miscellaneous? What kind of business expenses after miscellaneous? Well, I did A, B, C, D. Then you're going to basically be able to say, okay, how can you match your miscellaneous receipts along with that? 
because you got this miscellaneous there. You want to be detailed. Break that thing down so that you can let the IRS know also, guys, that you are diligent with your accounting records. You start showing the auditor that you are diligent with your accounting records. You say, yes, I got a total big thing of advertising, but instead of sometimes you want to put advertising, do you want to put the type of advertising you can do? You can do that. Do you want to do all, you, you know, here's all of my websites. Here's all of my domain names, right? Here's all of my social media things. Here's all of my leads lists. You know, here's this, and you can have them separate. It's a computer. You can put as many of them once you want. When you print that thing out, it's going to have a, 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 a statement there that's going to basically have all those things all there for you added up. It's ink. Get detail with it. Because not being detailed, basically being lazy, okay? It's been lazy on your accounting records. You don't want to be lazy on accounting records. See, we're talking about beating every audit, guys. We're talking about beating every, we're talking about when the, the auditor comes to you or asks for some records that you basically send that thing to them and they like, ain't no need to actually talk to them any longer. So they can put it in that file. Ain't no need to even talk to them any longer. Why? Because they got everything in line. I've seen it. I've seen it one year. I've seen it two years, whatever it is. Okay. You want to make sure that you have it detailed on every item. You don't have to just go by the schedule C line items that's there. You know, when you have to say that, you got telephone. Well, what telephone? Okay. Is this the office line or is it this cell phone line? We just lump everything in there. And then we say, oh, well, yeah, my internet is included in there as well. <laughs> really? Guys, break it down. Why do you want to break that down? I'm going to give you a tip real quick. You want to break that down because before 2011, there was always, you know, what percentage you did on business versus personal on your cell phone. And you got a percentage of your cell phone. After 2011 rolled up, the IRS actually stipulate that if you had an office phone or a home phone, excuse me, if you had a home phone, the home based business owners, right? If you had a home phone there, then your cell phone can be 100% deductible. You want to separate that so you can see it. You want to separate it, okay? So you can see it not lumping everything together because if they see telephone expense and they see $6,000 in telephone expense and, and they look in front of you and and, and you got a, a T-Mobile or Boost Mobile or $50 um, dollars a month for unlimited calls, but you got telephone expense of $6,000, like, where's the other amount coming from? They're looking at things like that. They're looking at things like that. When Arthur actually told me stuff, actually, when I was in there, stuff, she was like, we look at a lot of things. We look at your uh, um, jewelry you're wearing. We look at your watches. She said, people come on now with Movado watches. And I kind of actually laugh and giggle because that's kind of what I wear. But you know what I'm saying? But they look at things like that. They see your cell phone and they see this big expense. They are thinking. They are trained to do that. They're not stupid, guys. They're trained to do that. Make sure you are detailed. Okay, you are detail, uniform. Oh, you know what? We're we're talking about some of these expensive stuff on the later, you know, say after Monday call, but some things that we shouldn't actually be doing anyway. Okay, but that is what that's the second D. The third D, okay, the third D of triple D, guys, on how to beat every audit is disclosure. Hey, Tasha, how you doing? Disclosure, okay. That's the other one. Because here's what a disclosure is. Sometimes there are special circumstances that's what goes on in the business. That sometimes you can't just put on the tax return because certain situations just may have happened that's not usual. But if the IRS is reading your paper, how you got to think? If they're reading, if you have something unusual that had happened that year, okay? Uh, some kind of thing that you had to redo it or dispense is very high than all these other years, even though you got receipts for it, you document it, even though that you're detailed about it. But let's say something happens to your office and you had to purchase all new things in your home office because something had to happen. If something is there that you just can't, um, hold on for a second, somebody's trying to actually call me real quick, okay? If something happened that you just can't explain, OK, or they can't see it on your tax return and understand because it's unusual, it's big. You then want to disclose the information. That is probably one of the only times that I would actually say that we would think about mailing the tax return in versus electronic filing. If you can't put the notes on electronic, because sometimes the notes don't what go electronically to them. 
But sometimes if it's a huge item, if it's something big and it's a huge item that is on there, okay? And if it's a huge item that is on there that is out of the world, also you got these big depreciations, these big equipment costs, because something had to happen that year, you want to disclose it. Why? Because if an auditor have to look at that and all of a sudden it pops out on them on the computer, that this item is big, you want them to be able to look at that information and then actually say, you don't want them to say, that is a big amount. Let me highlight that. We got to ask them about that. Then they're going to start dissecting every one of the other expenses that you have. They're going to start looking at all those things. What you want them to do is to be able to look at that expense. Oh, that's a big expense. Let me highlight that. But then they look and they see a disclosure in there. They say, oh, oh, so they did this, 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 this. That's why is that. You want the question to be answered so they won't even think about calling you. Because do you know? that when they get an audit, it pops up on their screen. Sometimes it pops up on their screen so, or they get in front of their desk, they can look at things and they can counsel it because you can, you got disclosures there. It's already answered. So if you notice something is unusual, okay, disclose it. Disclose it. Now, if you get audited, you still got the disclosure there. You still actually got it. You documented everything. You can still beat the audit. But if one of the best ways to beat the audit is not get an audit, right? Okay, because that is a type of audit. Think about it. You just hadn't seen it. You beat the audit before they even sent you a paper with disclosure. Triple D, guys. Triple D. Remember that, okay? Triple D. So when you are doing your tax return for the 2018 tax year, congratulations if you're in business and 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 you're writing off everything you know that you can legally. Congratulations, you you done so well then in 2018. But we want to make sure that you using the triple D. We want to make sure that you're documenting everything. We want to make sure that you're detailed on your actual tax returns. And if necessary, we want to make sure that you are disclosing things that are different, okay, that are different from one year to the next year. Maybe that may be miles. It may be miles. You may have to start driving everywhere instead of flying everywhere or flying there instead of driving. Whatever it is, you may want to think about disclosure as well, okay? Triple um, D guys can actually save you a whole lot of headaches when getting audited with Internal Revenue Service, all right? With that being said, guys, make sure that you uh, um, 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 share this with um, anybody that you know. If you think that you got any value out of it, please actually share it with the individuals out there. We also, guys, want you to go over to actually YouTube. Uh, um, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to start pushing out a lot of different videos. Um, hopefully, we'll be taking these videos and put it over there in another section, but we're going to do a lot of tax tips and videos there. Terrence Hawkins EA is on the actual YouTube after channel. Go ahead and actually do that as well, okay? With that being said, guys, that's enough for this week. Again, I want to thank all of my veterans um, 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 for, you know, you know, your service and what you've done. Go out and actually get your free meal. Don't try to write off their free meal, right, because it's already free. You didn't pay for it, right? That being said, guys, this is T-Hawk, your favorite EA. Have a good week. Take care. Bye.